Welcome to Dubs Talk, presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit Mancini Sleep World for the July 4th sales event or visit sleepworld.com. I am Dalton Johnson, joined as always by our Warriors insider, Monty Poole. We are reporting from Miller and Lux right outside of Chase Center on what was an interesting day two of the second round of the draft where the Warriors did a handful of maneuvering <laughs> yeah. to add Lindy Waters the third from the Oklahoma City Thunder and also Quentin Post in the draft out of Boston College. They also reportedly are bringing in Reese Beekman from Virginia on a two-way deal. Monty, again, interesting maneuvering. <laughs> They're with a wrapper head all around, but three guys who are very experienced. We are not talking about 19, 20 year olds. We are talking about players who have a lot of playing time in their career. Yeah, totally different plan from what you had a few years ago, you know, when you went James Wiseman one year and teenager, and then you come in with Moses Moody and, and Jonathan Kaminga, the two teenagers, you know. Um, and the next year you come in with, you know, Patrick Baldwin Jr., Ryan Rollins, teenagers. Um, at the time they were looking at upside. They're trying to figure out a two timeline. We want future stars. At this stage, and even last year, they're looking for guys who can play. Guys who can give you something maybe right now. now we don't know how good these guys are going to be, but one's 22, one's 24, and one's 26. <laughs> so <laughs> that's telling you this is not about trying to figure out a way to find the next all-star. This is about the Warriors really adhering to their commitment, that they're saying, look, our task is to try and get everything we can out of the Steph Curry era. And Steph is 36, Draymond 34. Clay here, if he's back, he's 34. Um, if they bring in another, another star, he's going to be in his 30s almost certainly. So um, this is about filling in the gaps and bringing in guys that may be able to give them something but probably won't be stars. I mean, it's hard to find a guy that's not drafted or late in the second round, which it's happened, but it's hard to find one of those guys and, and, and say that they are going to be a cornerstone for your future franchise. I mean. The Nuggets got lucky, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jokic, second round draft pick, and he's a cornerstone, but that's a rarity. That's rare. Jalen Brunson, second round pick, cornerstone. That's rare. That's so rare. So <clears throat> when you look at this, though, like you said, it's pretty clear that this is about, yeah, this is no more teenagers now. Let's bring in some mature guys and see if they can click. Yeah, I would say two years in a row. I mean, I think the way that Mike Dunleavy is – conducting things when it comes to the draft. Look at him, a Duke guy who played multiple years under Coach K. He was ready for the NBA when he came into the Warriors, number three overall. He's not someone that wants to get projects. He wants to get production. Yeah. And we look even last year, Brandon Pajemski. Yeah, he was a two-year guy, really a one-year guy at Santa Clara, yeah. 20 years old. But he had such a, a feel for the game where you weren't having to project a lot of things. It was someone who, a big time rebounder as a guard already. So he had traits yeah. that could translate easily. Yes. Trace Jackson Davis, he was 23 years old, four year starter at Indiana. Now we look uh, this year, let's start with actually Lindy Waters a third, because yeah. that's actually how the day started. Right. It was about two <laughs> hours be before the second round of the draft was happening. We see this trade where the 52nd overall pick goes to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Right. The Warriors bring in Lindy Waters, a third, who, yeah, he's played three seasons in the, in the NBA, but he's yeah. already 26. Bounce between the NBA Exactly, and yeah, and NBA and G, League. G League guy. Yes. Let, let's yes. not act like he's an everyday starter right. in the NBA. Right. We understand that. He's bounced back and forth. He's put up some big numbers in the G League. Yeah. But in his limited opportunities with OKC, he can shoot the ball. Yeah, he can he's, shoot. Yeah, he's, he, he's a, I believe, a 37, 38% shooter from three-point range, 6'6", 215. Yep. So, you're, so you're seeing a guy that has a size. Yep. He can shoot the ball. Um, talking with Mike Dunleavy, he expects him to be on the roster, to be in the rotation, to be a guy doesn't need to be a star, but he has traits that can translate to the NBA game. Yeah, the Thunder, is, they, they, that team is – rich with wings i mean they got so many wings on that team they don't have much up front with behind chet you know but they've got wings for days and this is a guy who was probably their seventh best wing you know and so but again okc was the number one seed in the western conference so they're a pretty good team and there was just no place to play him so i think you're looking at a guy who um you know he had he went through a couple of colleges you know and and finally you know came to the pros but Interesting history, you know, he, he's a full-blooded Native American, and um, at 6'6", 215, his shot has been his, his sort of his bread and butter. 
Uh, but it looks like he can play some defense, too. They like his ability to sort of, I guess, hustle and just fill in. Do things like Pajemski kind of does. Mm. Make yourself somehow functional and useful in ways other than shooting. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I, I think, I think that the unusual thing for me is because we went into the morning thing and the Warriors are going to be picking 52nd. And then the first thing you hear is, okay, they, they, they traded that pick away. Okay, they don't have a draft pick now because, you know, you can't a – team, a, 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 a team that's in the tax can't buy a second-round pick anymore. Well, they, they found a way to sort of get around yeah, that a little bit yeah. later in the evening when um, it was announced that the Warriors were actually – they had acquired that second-round pick, number 52, because it was traded from OKC to Portland. And then the Warriors went to Portland <laughs> and got that pick back. So it's a lot to follow. But the long story is short is that the Warriors ended up with a 52nd overall pick that was not Lind uh, Lindy Waters, uh, but it was Quentin Post That's from right. Boston the big man, College. Seven footer. Yes. I, I, the big man, the seven footer who really checks the two biggest boxes for the Warriors right now, which is size and shooting. Yes. You're talking about a seven footer who can shoot the ball. The last two seasons at Boston College, I believe he shot. 43% from three-point range. Yeah. So he's not someone who's going to be shooting on the run by any means, but we're talking about pick and pop. He can get things done from beyond the arc. Yeah, he's seven feet, 245 or so. Um, it looks like he's one of those guys that can not just shoot the ball, but also can go on the block a little bit. But yeah. Um, rebounding is okay, so-so for his size, but he's a, a basic, basically a space five, you know, and if you can – I know Steve Kerr loves the idea of that with Space Five. You know, that's what you got when you when you went for uh, last summer when you went for Dario Saric, you saw him as a guy, a Space Five. And when you went the year before, you went for Bielitsa, he, he could be a Space Five. You know, a guy who can space the floor at the five is always valuable in the, in today's NBA. And we don't know again if, if he's going to be able to crack the rotation, but we do know that a seven footer who can shoot has value in the NBA, and so we'll see what the Warriors do with that. Yeah, exactly. They brought him in for a private workout. They seem to really like his game, but I like the player, too, because like Mike Dunleavy said, the maturity was obviously there. You know, yeah. he's someone, he's, he's going to be 25 years old in March. We're talking about a rookie, right? So I think the experience is very, very key here. He's going to be able to come into a locker room right away, not, not be afraid. He's from the Netherlands. You know, he's one of these guys, again, the basketball experience, the life experience, yep. where you're coming into a team that has, has championships it has life experience it has veterans he's not gonna be someone who's gonna be scared and sit back he's gonna be someone who yeah he might not go out here and be talking talking the talk <laughs> but I think he's gonna be someone who should be able to fit in pretty seamlessly yeah and he played 124 college games at two different schools now not just two schools but two schools that are kind of opposite in many ways Mississippi State Boston College <laughs> it's like but two, two years at each school, 124 games. So much like Trace Jackson Davis last season, he comes in with a full resume of college. Yeah. And we'll see what he does with it. Um, but again, to me, when you're the Warriors and you're looking for guys who can give you something that you look for anyway, normally they look for a veteran guy like that who can be a big, who can come off the bench and make shots. Uh, sometimes they win it. Sometimes they don't win it. Sometimes they get it. Sometimes they don't get it. Well, in this case, um, he's a young one. You know, he's not in his 30s like Nemanja was or like Dario nearly was when he came here last year. So it makes sense. Logical move given where the Warriors are right now because this is not a team looking for 2030. This is a team trying to build up something for 2025. And so that's uh, this coming season. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to ask too, because you look at Trace Jackson Davis the year before, and there was an interesting tidbit as far as there was a connection with Dunleavy. Obviously, his brother was the agent. So they were able to get that four-year deal. The first two, I believe, are guaranteed. Yep. And he and Dunleavy was asked when it comes to Quentin Post if he expects him to be rostered. And he didn't give a full answer. Right. said, like, that's up in the air, that right. there's a two-way option to, obviously. Financially, though, it makes sense to have someone who you think can – play who can be on the roster from at number 52 overall yeah. from a financial standpoint it makes sense to have him on the roster yeah they'll look at him in summer league you know i don't know i mean mike said that he's a little banged up you know yeah, so yeah, we'll yeah. see a little bit of a leg injury yeah. he said it's minor yeah. though yeah we'll see if he's able to play in vegas or something like that you know at some point maybe he gives them something but the warriors will assess him over the next few months and see how much they think they can get from him as they approach uh training camp in september so I'm looking at this and I'm going, yeah, can this guy play this year? And I'm saying, like most people are saying, I don't know. Right. I don't know. But 
tall shooter. Good, good. <laughs> theoretically, so, again, yeah. theoretically is what yeah. they need. Yes. And, and, and so um, I think, though, the, the, the guy that they signed to the two-way deal, uh, Reese, you know, Reese is like one of those guys you look at and you go, wait a minute, how come this guy's available on a two-year deal? You know, Reese Beekman. Um, and he's six foot one, six foot two, mm-hmm. point guard, four-year starter at University of Virginia. Four-year starter at Virginia, who was... ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Back-to-back years. Yes. So I'm looking at that, I'm going, why is he available? Well, maybe be, partly because he's old in today's era. He's 22, and teams love to go for the 19, 20, 18, 19, 20-year-olds looking at upside. The Warriors are unconcerned with upside right now. They're feeling a sense of urgency about Steph's his prime, and it's the right move. You don't look for upside right now. If you're the Warriors, you're looking for guys who maybe give you something right now. And so if, if he can come in here and give you something, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But they've gone through a gamut of potential backup guards over the years, and none of those guys have stuck. You know, you look at whether it's been a guy coming, they, they draft a guy like, like Nico Mannion, you know, didn't stick around. You know, whether you find a guy off the, the heap like uh, Tris Chiosa, you know, cheese, cheese didn't stick. You know, you find guys, Kai Bowman, a year before that, you know, so – this is a guy who has some pretty good credentials, and we'll see where he goes. But, again, the Warriors began this day with one draft pick, and they end this day with three acquisitions in a variety of ways. Yeah. <laughs> they went through a maze to get there, yes. no doubt about it. But you're talking about with Reese Speakman, yeah, this is someone in Virginia. This is such a, a well-known program, very, very well coached. Yep. And, yeah, you brought up ba- yeah. Yeah, back-to-back ACC Defensive Player of the Year, three-time All-ACC, All-Defense, the last three years. I mean, we're looking at defensive ratings of 97, 97, 95, 6. The guy is clearly a dog on the defensive end. So it might not be a Santa Cruz project by any means. Yeah, it it looks like the offense is probably secondary. The shot is secondary. But, man, I mean, if we know what the Warriors' defense was last year, if they can get someone who has that defensive acumen, will challenge guys from the start, I think that can go a long way. Yeah, he's a playmaker. I mean, he does. He does. He's a really good distributor based on his stats. But you look at him and you just think, okay. But when I saw, when I started checking into this guy, the first guy that came to mind was Davion Mitchell. Mm. You know, when the King drafted him, short guy, not really tall. This guy's a little bit taller than Davion. Davion's barely six feet. Yeah. You know, and, and so at least Reese is like six two. But more important is that. Um, He's a guy who was defense first, and that's how Davion was. You know, they called Davion off night when he was in college, but at the NBA level, he's been good, but he hasn't been spectacular on defense. So we don't know what this guy can bring, what this kid can bring, but if you're the Warriors, you're looking at fringes, guys who maybe give you something in the next year or two, now looking at a guy who might be an all-star five years from now. Yeah, and I will say this about Lindy Waters, a third two, is one thing that I really, really like about him when you think about the Oklahoma City Thunder, yes, they were the number one seed this year. It's been ramped up. But their player development, that has what's really stuck out. That's the reason that they were the number one seed this year is because they didn't have to go out and get veterans. They didn't have to go out and get stars. Yeah. They've built this thing. Obviously, we know, we know the trade – few years ago when it comes to SGA, yeah. but they've built him up. They've built their, their team from the ground floor with this player development. So I think you get a guy who, again, has been in their G League system, yep. has been in their NBA system, yep. who has developed and learned through that staff, and now you bring him into a team that's such less development but more win now, and that really seems like a win to me. Yeah, Sam Pressy, who runs the operation in OKC, is one of the best guys in the league at evaluating talent and finding guys. I mean. You look at that roster that the Thunder has right now, and maybe a couple of years ago, even last year before the year started, you thought, okay, they could be good in a couple of years. They're way ahead of schedule, and that's that really a testament to not just the evaluation of players coming in, but also the development, like you mentioned. So um, you got a good coach in Mark Dagnall. You've got a good general manager. you got a good program there. And so I think in, in the case of Lindy, looking at a guy who I think has, like you said, have a chance to be able to be – uh, in the Warriors' rotation as the season goes on. Um, it's a wing league. It's a wing league, and he's a wing, a legitimate wing, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to see what he can bring. Yeah, I think that you look at the draft just real quick. Is that I think there was a handful of 
Western Conference teams that made really smart selections, but the draft overall was not one of these generational drafts no. by any means. There's no LeBron, no Melo, no Wimby. Yeah. There's not a guy that sticks out by any means. So Mike Dunleavy, even before the draft, said if, this, if there's a year to not have a first round pick, this was the year. Yeah. And for a little bit, it seemed like if there's a year to have a second round pick, <laughs> this is the year because yeah. of the Lindy Waters trade. But again, to be able to come out of this draft and get guys that fit needs mm -hmm. because like in the draft you're not always going for need by any means but if you're this kind of team this kind of trajectory where you are right now yeah you are looking more for need than upside yeah you know I think when you look at the way the draft went um, there was no great big surprise I mean there were some guys that maybe slid a little bit you know but Filipowski definitely slid a little bit there are some reasons you can check social media for that <laughs> But, but the bottom line is that I don't think anybody drafted a guy saying he's going to be a cornerstone guy for us for years to come. It's all hope. The first three of the first six guys were, you know, guys from, from France. And uh, last year, the guy from France you knew was generational. <laughs> but this year, you don't know so much. And so uh, some of the things you read on social media about Risa Shea is that, you know, he's good, but not generational. And so we'll see. But I got to admit... You know, we had Mike Dunley before a little while today, and there are a couple of things that he said in his 12, 13 minutes with us. And one of the things that stuck out to me was that he was asked again, you know, he had said on Monday when we talked to Mike, he said something about how he didn't want to part with the young guys on this team. Kaminga is always a guy whose name comes up. And the words have said, you know, we don't know, you know, we, we don't want to move. We love JK. And Moody, JK, Pajemski, Trace. Those are the four guys they say that we're looking at those guys and saying we want to keep those guys around because we think they can be part of our future. And today he said, he was asked about, well, what would it take to move one of those guys? And he didn't say it's not possible. <laughs> he didn't say they're untouchable. What he said was it would take someone who would be basically a player who could alter the trajectory of our franchise, make our team immensely better. And... Of course, my thought drifted to Paul George. Yeah. Because Paul George is someone who the Warriors have had on their radar for a while. They're monitoring the situation in L.A. where he can opt out of his contract, the last year of his contract. Chances are it's looking like he just might opt out. Uh, Lawrence Frank, who runs the Clippers down there, said after the draft said that we've had conversations with Paul, but we know he's earned the right to, to, to opt out and become an unrestricted free agent. And at that point, if you're the Warriors, your ears perk up. Now, that can't happen immediately because they have to wait till a new cap year, which doesn't begin until July 1st on Monday. Because both the Warriors and the Clippers are in the tax. So they can't really do much right now. But the Warriors cannot go after Paul George based on his free agent status. It would have to be a sign and trade deal. And so, there are some avenues that have to be pursued for it to happen, but Mike Dunleavy basically said that, yeah, if the right deal comes along, we'll be willing to part with our young core. And to me, that's a little bit different stance than what we've heard from over the past few months about this. Yeah, I agree. And I think the simple fact is you're not going to get a Paul George. You're not going to get a star-level player without Jonathan Kaminga being part of that package. He, he's the biggest asset. He's the best player right now out of those four. He's the one who's taken that year three leap last yep. year, right? So, yes, you can imagine a world, vision a world where you have Paul George, you have Jake. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> right, so I, right. I, I kind of like the fact that Mike Dunleavy, without fully coming out and saying that, made that a little more clear too, where yeah. it's like, hey, yeah, we don't want to have to get rid of these guys. We're willing to listen. It has to be the right guy. Yes. But let's be real. Without Jonathan Kaminga, there's no way that you're going to get a Paul George, a Laurie Mark, any kind of star name that you want to want to throw out there. Yeah. Jonathan Kaminga almost has to be part of that package. Yeah, and, and again, this also circles back to Steph Curry. I mean, this is about the Warriors looking at this and feeling a sense of urgency, saying that, okay, you know what? If we are going to trade our young guys, or one or two or three of them, then it's because we think we got something that can do us good right now. And, you know, Paul George, of all the guys that are free agents or might be free agents, 
Um, he would be the top of the list. I mean, LeBron can be a free agent. He ain't going anywhere. No. He ain't going anywhere now, especially now. <laughs> not not, not for LeBron. No, no. <laughs> no, James Harden could be a free agent, but but Paul George is a better player. Yeah. Uh, Tyrese Maxey's restricted, so don't come. He's he staying ain't in even, Philly. He's yeah, staying he ain't even, in Philly. Exactly, exactly. So you look at those guys and you go, well, uh, you come back to Paul George. And, and so that's why that's a situation to monitor, you know, especially if he opts out because – when he opts out is when things are really get interesting because there will be teams looking at looking away for a way to get to him. Some teams have cap space and go after him immediately, like Philadelphia. But you know, Paul's a California guy. <laughs> How many years does Steph Curry have left on his contract? Two. Two. How many more years did Steve Kerr sign up for? Two. Two. We know that that is the timeline. Yeah. That is the timeline right now. So everything that the Warriors have to be doing going forward is on that two to three year plan going forward. And again, we cannot project what a Lindy Waters is going to be, what a Quentin Post is going to be, but in a vacuum, they at least fit yes. that kind of timeline. So that's why overall this day made a lot of sense in Warriors world. Yeah. The next week or so is going to be very, next few days is going to be very interesting to see where this goes. But it's pretty affirmed. It's pretty clear that when the Warriors say we are dedicated and committed to making the most, uh, maximizing the Steph Curry era, you're seeing what they're doing, and it, it makes sense. Well, we played a lot of mental gymnastics today. We are got to wrap this up now. I am Dalton. That's Monty. This is Dubstock.